Volume 50 set of the week comes from Coach Knight. Um, I know um, the coaches whom I associate with uh, are having a hard time accepting the fact that Coach, uh, Coach Knight's passed away, but I wanted to do as much in this newsletter uh, to honor Coach Knight and uh, we'll probably do so for the foreseeable future. But anyway, this is a set play we um, we picked up watching an old videotape of Coach Knight's team when he was at IU versus uh, Coach Majerus's team when Coach was at uh, Utah. And this was one of the uh, preseason, not, not an exhibition game, but one of the early season games where they played... Uh, in either Hawaii or somewhere um, exotic. And it was a great time for basketball. You had Rick Majerus at Utah, Coach Knight at IU, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there was a lot of these coaches in this same tournament. And this was uh, one of the first uh, games is, uh, was IU versus Utah. So two uh, legendary basketball coaches who were uh, fierce competitors anyway. So this is this game um, was really interesting for a lot of reasons, but everyone knew that Coach Majerus liked the five-man free switch, which this year uh, he had a, a giant inside. Um, I can't think of the kid's name, but uh, we were you know everyone wanted to know how they're going to five-man free switch with uh, this with this huge kid inside. And it ended up um, Coach Majerus had a four-man switching rotation. And his big kid never switched. But Coach Knight liked to run triangle a lot versus teams who switched. And uh, I've met so many great coaches who were affiliated with Coach Knight. Donnie Campbell, Jack Gaber, uh, Adam Paytai. Um, and I know I'm forgetting some, and I, I certainly don't mean to. But that was one of the first things I liked to talk about when I, when I met these people was what did Coach Knight do against switching because... Uh, with our blocker mover, everybody switched. Anyway, so one brought the ball across the timeline, and as soon as the trigger line was crossed, three came in and went over the top of four, and one hit three. We called that a Spartan cut. Uh, I don't know why, but anyway, as soon as three caught the ball, then one went high and wide, and two and four went directly across the lane and screened for five. And five came over that. And, and one of the things about Coach Knight that I never thought he got the credit for amongst the thousands of people uh, was his, his, create, his ability to be creativity. He was one of the most creative coaches. Um, he would teach five to squeeze in between these two guys, fake high, go low, et cetera, et cetera. But I know just listening to practices and him talk a lot, he liked this over-the-top action. And once five peeled over that, four found the X2 and just gutted him. And two peeled off of that on a really tight curl action looking for a shot here. Now, once that screening action, four and two took place, one hightailed it the heck out of there to stretch the floor horizontally. So four is just ramming X2, and here comes X2 on that, and three hits him. And now five, and uh, the big kid for, for uh, Utah liked to play on the low side. And... Five just faced him chin to chin and railroaded him and got position here. And four peeled underneath and showed up. And I figured out after uh, 20 years of watching this, he was just more than anything getting offensive rebounding position. Two's first look, obviously, was to shoot or drive, which uh, this during this year, I believe this was um, Dane Fife, if my memory serves correct. And uh, on that, if Dane couldn't shoot it or drive it, he was looking at five. But more often on the shot, he was shooting the thing, and four would just back this Utah kid out to the old high school volleyball line and uh, just go after that uh, offensive rebound like it was a, the last pork chop at Old Country Buffet. And um, then five would crash the glass as well. 
Now, three, after he threw the ball, would um, sink down to the, not to the dead corner, but sink a little bit. And you've got all this room now for two to work. One of the occasions uh, we saw this, two fired it to one and four rescreened for five. And then four followed that. And they had a nice high low out of this with four and five. And then two just went to the pro spot and hung out here and spotting up. If X2 goes and helps on that uh, high low pass, then you've got the best shooter, one of the best shooters in the country open here for a step in three. So this was something we toyed around with over the years. Uh, we just called it triangle. Um, but it was one, ended up being one of our end-of-quarter sets versus teams who switched. Now, it's a hard pill to swallow if you're a really uh, if you're a, if you're really controlling and you want to know where the ball's going to go and, and exactly who's going to shoot it, which I completely get. I'm not being critical. But this isn't really a set for you then unless you've got three or four kids whom have played for you for a long time and know exactly what you want. Then I think it would work out masterfully. But a lot of the thing, one of the things I liked about this was what we thought we were going to get a lot of times we didn't, but we would get a wide open lay in or the shot for the right per or a shot for the right person. So I think it's any time, any way it's uh, it's worth your time investment to look into that. There's a multitude of different things you can do. I know if you call uh, Brooks. Miller at Trine University in Angola, Indiana, or Mike McBride, who's the head men's coach at Holy Cross in South Bend, Indiana. Um, they still run coach night stuff um, hand and fist uh, with, with very little deviation. Those two guys uh, know this stuff better than anybody. And, and the cool thing about those two guys are they're, uh, they're great human beings. They like talking basketball. They're old school guys. They uh, they will talk to you. Matter of fact, I just saw Trine play uh, uh, in an exhibition game this past Saturday, and my God, do they look good! Uh, Brooks has them playing Coach Knight motion, um, damn near as well as I've ever seen it. Uh, so he's he's got his kids cutting and screening and driving the basketball. Uh, God, those kids can drive it this year. So anyway. Like I said, I think it's worth your time investment to screw around with it. There's a lot of things you can do out of it. Hey, God bless, folks.